Time now for our weekly update series with Dr. Stephen Pomerantz of MRI Online. Dr. Pomerantz, we're looking forward to the Thursday night game as we're set to kick off the NFL's 100th season between the Chicago Bears and Green Bay Packers. Both teams have tight ends with ailments. Let's start with the Chicago Bears tight end, Trey Burton. He has that growing injury. What can you tell us about how that might impact his performance? Well, as you know, I think about a year ago, Trey Burton, who as you know, is a tight end, uh, had sports hernia uh, surgery and sports hernia syndrome. People don't know that a sports hernia is not a hernia. It's a misnomer. A sports hernia is actually a weakness or a deficiency, mostly in a muscle group that runs down the middle and front of your body. So that six-pack that everybody wants to get when they're 20 years old, if you have a small injury to that or where it attaches on your pubic bone or where the groin muscles attach to the pubic bone, that is the classic sports hernia. And again, it's not, it's not a defect so much. It's not a hernia so much as it is a weakness or a small micro injury or micro tear. So let's, let's uh, formulate an analogy. I, I know you all remember when Kevin Durant was injured, they said he had a calf injury. And the first thing I thought to myself and mentioned to people close to me was, okay, the calf, the calf muscle is connected to the Achilles tendon. In fact, it makes up the Achilles tendon. So I was genuinely concerned that the weakness of the calf muscle would lead to undue stress of the Achilles. And indeed, that's exactly what happened, even though the doctors professed that they were completely separate things. They are not completely separate things. They're connected. And in the same way, the sports hernia consists of the abdominal muscles and the groin muscles and tendons. So the fact that he's had a groin injury is not coincidental. In some way, it's directly or indirectly related to his original sports hernia insult. Now, these things can be very nagging. So if he has a new discrete injury, it's likely that it is related to a weakness that was produced by his sports hernia syndrome. If it's a recurrence of the sports hernia syndrome that is not being revealed, and that is a chronic problem that is difficult to deal with and usually requires some type of intervention. So we won't know. Either way, there's got to be a relationship between this groin injury and sports hernia syndrome. I think it's unlikely that he will play this week. If he doesn't play the following week, then I think you have your answer. And your answer is he's got a chronic problem related to the original sports hernia syndrome with a superimposed insult to the groin muscles, and the likelihood of him having full function for the season is pretty low. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Palmer, I'd like to dive maybe just a little bit deeper. How might this injury sort of inhibit an athlete's ability to move or cut or even burst when it's time to run? Sorry, it's an excellent question. And, you know, when, when most non-experts look at an MRI, which is the test of choice for sports hernia, syndrome, they often don't see much because you have to look in very unique places. The findings are extremely subtle, but the clinical manifestations are unique. Now, if I were to have a sports hernia uh, syndrome, I'm an older person. I don't have to develop that explosive leg drive, whereas the performance athlete, they've got to have an explosive leg drive, the ability to turn and twist and cut. And sports hernia syndrome, despite the fact that it has very subtle few medical imaging manifestations, can have a pretty devastating effect on the athlete's ability to form, perform at their highest level. In other words, they can't generate core power. That is the bottom line. So Trey Burton is listed as limited and could be uncertain to perform in the Thursday night game. Let's talk about the Green Bay Packers tight end, Jimmy Graham, because there's very little information on his injury. He's had a, an injury to his finger. What can you tell us about that, and will it at all inhibit his ability to play? You know, Sally, not much, really, to be honest. Uh, I, I have gleaned that he has two fingers taped together. So it could be anything from a tendon injury to a, a bone injury to a sprain of the 
the finger joint. Um, the most likely, with the two fingers being taped together, is that he developed a little chip fracture in one of the fingers. But you know as well as I, you know, you having played in the NFL, uh, me not, uh, but I have, I have caught a few footballs from some pretty athletic individuals. It's got to be incredibly difficult with two fingers taped together. He's a consummate professional, but I have to believe that there's going to be a little bit of drop-off in his ability to, to catch the ball. But I think he'll, uh, he'll have a full season as long as he doesn't re-injure that finger. And it's a very daunting task to catch a professional quarterback's football with two fingers taped together. But if anyone can do it, this man can. Yeah, and, and I guess I just want to get your thought on this because we often see many athletes, when they show us their hands, when they play in the NFL, they've got some finger that's twisted and kind of gnarled, and it just looks eerily bizarre. Um, for the non-athletic people or people who didn't play football, kind of just help us to understand there are athletes who have those kind of fingers, but they're still able to play, even though it looks um, um, horrible sometimes. Well, Sully, I have to say that I, I uh, I am shocked at the ability of professional athletes in all sports, NBA, NFL, and NHL, at their ability to play at the highest or almost the highest level with some amazing injuries. I've seen goals scored with elbow, complete elbow dislocations with basically one hand by some some of the great NHL players. So in terms of these two tight ends, I am far more concerned about the short and long-term prognosis for Trey Burton as opposed to Jimmy Graham. Well, thank you, Dr. Pomerantz. We always appreciate your insightful analysis on our weekly injury update. That's Dr. Pomerantz of MRI Online. We thank you very much. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.